Good afternoon, everyone. This is Michael Malley here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for August 3rd, 2022, around 11.40 a.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including multiple changes upcoming for the 2022 Atlantic hurricane season. What to expect and when will the tropical cyclone start to come? So let's go ahead and jump straight into everything. Taking a weather across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, we noticed that it is pretty quiet for the basin, which is to be expected for the 3rd of August. We do have a few tropical waves that are now emerging off the coast of Africa, including a pretty strong wave up here. Uh, this is at pretty high latitudes, at least for this time of the year. And we notice that there's some pretty dry, stable air to the north, especially near the Cabo Verde Islands. So this is not likely to go on to develop into much of anything. And that is certainly some good news. But there are signs of things starting to peak up here. And we'll talk about that here in a minute. Focusing real quick on the severe weather cross portions of the Midwest U.S. today. We do have a slight risk for severe storms generally from about Chicago, Illinois through Detroit, Michigan, through about Kansas City, Missouri. Again, we have a primary risk for wind, again, a 15% wind. So that means 15% chance of damaging winds over 58 miles per hour or greater within a 25 mile radius. And also only a 2% tornado probability. Again, some of that uh, lake breeze interaction with Lake Michigan certainly would help to create any tropicals or any uh, tornadoes in that region. But temperatures are going to be the big story. Very warm across most of the Midwest U.S. today, especially some potential for temperatures over 100 degrees, especially across Kansas City, Missouri, all the way down to Fayetteville, Arkansas, and the potential for widespread 80s and 90s all the way through portions uh, of Pennsylvania and all the way through portions of Detroit, Michigan. Now, looking at the East Pacific Basin today, we do have a couple of systems that we are still keeping our eye on. First of all, we have Tropical Depression Georgette, still a tropical depression, but it is likely to become a post-tropical cyclone later today, probably within the next advisory. The East Pacific and Central Pacific Hurricane Center are monitoring a new system to the south of Georgette with a 30% chance of developing over the next five days as this moves westward across the tropical Pacific and then crosses into the central pacific region of responsibility and then we have this new system here south and west of guatemala city this has a 70 percent chance of becoming a tropical cyclone over the next five days as this also moves towards the northwest here we'll have to watch how close this gets to portions of the baja peninsula here and if this potentially impacts the cabo san lucas resort areas so far there's no indication of that but it will just be something to kind of keep in mind as it progresses over the next couple of days but no significant concern, at least for the next five to six days. Now, in the Atlantic Basin, things are starting to change. So for that, let's go look at the GFS forecast. This is the GFS ensembles, the uh, 060 run valid for 8 a.m. this morning. Again, what we're looking at is the ensemble mean sea level pressure. And again, we kind of noticed that right now the East Pacific is basically getting all the fame. That's where most of the tropical cyclones have been for the last several weeks. And that's generally a result of all the upward moving air and just the background favorability across the East Pacific. Nothing necessarily out of the unusual for this time of the year for sure. But we'll start to move forward in the Atlantic Basin. And first thing you start to notice that we do have a little bit more clustering of potential areas of low pressure out here in the deep tropics. And that's certainly some good news that the tropics in the Atlantic side are starting to come uh, to life. Now we notice that there could still be one or two more tropical systems in the East Pacific Basin over the next couple of weeks. That's certainly not out of the realm of possibilities. But if we look towards the end of the run here in the GFS forecast, besides the Gulf of Mexico stuff, because that is certainly voodoo land and we know how the GFS works with that, but generally speaking, in the deep tropics in the main development region, we actually do have more enhanced areas of low pressure. And this goes to suggest that the background favorability is beginning to change. And we're starting to see that change from kind of an unfavorable pattern to a more favorable pattern. Not guaranteeing, obviously, that a storm is going to form within that time frame. But this goes to about August 20th. And that certainly is kind of lining up pretty nicely with what we were thinking of. And kind of that August 20th is that kind of that magic flip of the switch that kind of occurs. And that's what we're starting to see here on the models. If you look at the upper level wind environment on the GFS, it's not all that unfavorable until you start to get to near the Lesser Antilles and portions of the Windward Islands. That's kind of where it becomes unfavorable because of an upper level tropical upper tropospheric trough. But other than that, there's actually pretty good wind environment across the deep tropics. And if we look at the ensemble mean sea level, sea level pressure, according to the European ensembles as well, we're kind of in the state right now 
where we have lower than average pressure anomalies and that goes to suggest that we have reduced trade winds and increased favorability for things to start to develop and we notice that we remain in that pattern for quite some time and on this particular run of the, the European this goes out to about August 18th and we notice that even through this time we still remain with those below average pressure patterns and the precipitable water patterns at this time. Now, we notice that on the, the European forecast, at least, we do have a little bit of dry, residual dry air that does try to get pumped in from the Canary Current and diving southward into the Gulf of Mexico, or not into the Gulf, but into the main development region. And this is going to need to be ironed out before the gates kind of flood open with tropical cyclones. But it would not surprise me in the very least to see one or two systems try to get going out here and certainly this is reflected in the European ensembles as well, the very long range, but it does at least go to suggest that the pattern is beginning to flip. And so we'll have to see how that works out, but the upper level environment, again, is pretty favorable. Most of the Atlantic main development region is pretty wide open for development if the um, dry air can kind of abate for a little bit. So we're looking at a pretty favorable pattern right now. But let's see what some of the climate models are suggesting. This is the CFS version 2. And we're going to be looking kind of at the MSLP anomalies over the next couple of weeks. Again, generally speaking, we notice that right now, this is kind of the pattern that we're in. Pretty anomalous, lower than average pressures across the deep tropics. And that's certainly some good news. And we seem to have that continue into August. And then, of course, by September, uh, the pressure pattern kind of changes uh, but that's kind of to be expected as the season begins to then taper off after about September 10th or so because that's peak season. Uh, but generally speaking, we should be in a lower than average pressure pattern for the next several weeks, for the next month or so. And that's going to allow for the deep tropics to kind of warm up quite substantially. The canned sips forecast kind of follows much of the same here below average pressure patterns. And with those precipitation anomalies certainly suggesting uh, the potential for above average rainfall in the deep tropics into the Caribbean and even the Gulf of Mexico to some degree. So we'll have to continue to monitor that to see exactly what happens. But now is the time to implement your hurricane preparedness plans, get things ready to go, because once we start getting into the really the peak of the season and the pattern begins to flip around, which it's doing so currently, but it's going to be another few weeks. So now's the time to get your preparedness plans ready to go. If you live in an evacuation zone, know where to go, know you know how you're going to evacuate, what zones you're in, because there are different zones, have additional medication, food, water, basic supplies that you need for everyday living, and stuff like that. So with that being said, I do hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali, and I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.